of my friends here, when I tell them I'm interested in cars, they all want to talk about electric cars. Electric cars. You should get an electric car. Everyone's getting an electric car. You're going to get an electric car? I say, no, I'm not sold on the electric car thing. Mostly because my lifestyle uh, takes me out and about away from the cities on the weekends and long road trips. It's just something I like to do. And even with China's very, very good electric car infrastructure, it's still not very conducive for me. But we may have found a solution to that. And that's this, the Li One. I have done many videos about the Li One in the past. One of them here when I introduced it about a year ago. So the good folks over at Li Auto actually gave me this car for a couple weeks. And I asked them, what do you want me to do with it? And their only instructions were, live with it. I know. Twist my arm, right? <laughs> Most of you are already familiar with the Li One and what exactly it is. It's a it's an electric SUV with a range extending uh, power generator in it, giving it about 800 kilometers. And yes, that's true. I'm getting about 800 kilometers with a full tank of gas and a full charge battery out of this. It is a truly remarkable piece of engineering and technology, and it is by far one of the best cars I have ever driven, especially at its price point. the Li One for a couple weeks. I've driven these before, but this is my first time gonna try and drive a daily driver. It's a beautiful green one. It's got about 35,000 kilometers on it. It's all charged up at about 70% and uh, it doesn't have very much gas in it. So the first thing I gotta do is go put some gas in it. I'm in the north side of Guangzhou and I do have a long drive back to Zhongshan. So let's get it done. Hopefully I can get on the road before the traffic starts. Driving through Guangzhou, is actually a treat if you have maps to guide you. If you don't have maps, even if you know the city well, you're going to get lost because there's so many of these elevated highways and off ramps and line Bs and side roads. If you're an infrastructure junkie like me, you think it's awesome. But if you're not, you would find it a nightmare. Yeah, I won't lie. It's pretty nice just kind of driving through the town, windows down, sunroof open, playing a little music on a on a beautiful uh, early evening. Getting up this early, uh, it's just part of my life these days. You gotta get up, gotta get ready for the day, fight traffic. And it's still early enough to where you know, the traffic hasn't come into being yet. And this is early in the morning, unfortunately, in Guangdong. Um, the only coffee place open is Mickey D's, which is not bad. I mean, McDonald's is pretty good coffee, I think, considering the price and the convenience factor of it. You know, also, it's rush hour which means you hit a lot more traffic. It's not very far, it's only about 10 kilometers, but it can take 30 minutes to sometimes even an hour, depending on traffic. It's not on the highway, it's all city driving. There's random construction zones here and there. Lots and lots of kids going to school, parents taking their kids to school, things like this. Highly unpredictable commute. A couple of stoplights up ahead, you know, it usually takes, you know, three or four greens to get through it. These are the student drivers. They're all over the road in this part of the town, and they drive extremely slowly at idle speed, really. And uh, it's quite dangerous because people are going around them at high speed and everything, and they're everywhere, and they're unpredictable because they'll be in the right lane, the left lane, 
it's it's not easy to critic. So you can see over here, there's one guy making a right hand turn, trying to merge into traffic at idle speed. stop in the middle of the road right here. Everyone just going about their day and on their way to work. Yeah, it sounds like this you appreciate this little radar right here and all the cars but not just that but all the bikes and the people around you. I mean um, there's warnings and everything just so that you don't hit anybody. <laughs> it can be a little chaotic at times. <laughs> Uh, that's par for the course for uh, commuting to work in the morning here in Chongqing. You've got a lot of things that are con uh, configurable in this, but here's something as your nap mode. Set your time. I'm thinking uh, 20 minutes. Enable. Oh, and now my seat is moving back into nap mode. <laughs> That's very interesting. Driving this thing in the parking garages, it takes a while to get used to it because it is much bigger than uh, other cars around you. And some of these spaces can be pretty tight, especially in a busy parking garage where you gotta kind of weave in and out a lot. But the cameras come on automatically when you're in a narrow area and it, it really gives you a, a little more sense of security. And of course, the 360 degree camera is great for doing three point turns or backing into a very tight space. Because it is wider, is that when you park in a space, sometimes you are unable to get out <laughs> of the, the driver's door because you're up against a wall or a pillar or even another car. I mean, this isn't a, a Wooling Mini. I mean, <laughs> you really have to be a lot more choosy and maybe even a little more creative. Driving through these parking garages with internal combustion engine, it's very loud and uh, people can uh, hear you coming as they're, as they're walking through it, right? With, with an electric car, people can't hear you. So you don't wanna be rude and honk the horn so they get out of the way, but at the same time, they can't hear you. They're either playing with their phone or chatting with their friends. And so if there's nobody around, it's nice and peaceful as you go through the lots. You don't have the echoing effect of an engine revving. So what are your first impressions of the uh, Lee? It's super quiet. It's quieter than your car. Much, yeah, yeah, much more quieter. Does your head fall into that pillow? It's almost too comfortable. Just make sure. Just when I fall asleep, asleep yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful Sunday here in Zhongshan. We're headed east. This is like my secret spot. Really? Yeah, I love coming here. There's some areas where we can hang out and do like barbecue. Here? That's yeah, what I was thinking. It's pretty, it's pretty flat. That's good? Yeah. Okay. So one of the things that we really, really like to do is go hiking and be in nature. Get away from the city. Uh, Wu Guishan, just south of the main part of Zhongshan, is a paradise of nature and hiking and mountain biking. It's really, really great. It's easy just to, with a little bit of exploring, to find yourself a nice, quiet little area. What I like to do is I have all my camping gear in just this little box. You just grab it, throw in the back and go, and it's got the awning, the chairs, the cooking. Great for just a, a quick jaunt for an afternoon out in nature.
a fun little afternoon of barbecue in the woods. Battle scars. Was it? No, it's on. Your door's not closed. Really? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Driving through these uh, these small little streets in this in the village here, and a car this big again can be a little intimidating. But with all the cameras, and there's another thing: when you have a big car, you can kind of persuade traffic a little bit, so it's not so bad. Continuing our Sunday here in Yako Village. Ugh. You gotta watch where you drive. You don't want to get that stuck in your tire. <laughs> uh, Yako Village uh, near uh, Nanlong is a beautiful village. I got a couple of coffee shops and a couple of gift shops out here. You can string a hammock, have a nice picnic. It's pretty good. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. All right, ice cream. Hello, hey, how's it going? So you can actually rent these bikes and go like ride around in the village too. Zhongshan is full of surprises. So if you're curious, the little bikes to run around this village are about 30 UA. A monta. Yeah, it's very, very peaceful. Get yourself a coffee or a lemon tea and enjoy a late afternoon on a Sunday. If you want fresh cut, there's like a little river inlet that comes and we're on this uh, this road that is just basically a, a, a dike uh, and uh, the boats come right up to the seafood restaurants with the catch of the day and then you uh, feast on it. Really, really beautiful area, but I feel like we want to go find a little more quieter area for the sunset. So one of the best places for the sunset in Zhongshan are these little uh, villages on the outskirts where they have some of these great seafood restaurants. 